problem of composing images for a television or computer screen. You've got to put everything into a little box. Why is that a problem? Well, it's way different than what you're used to seeing. Here, I'll prove it to you. Imagine if I were standing in one end of the studio, you would probably see me like this. But while this might be a good field of vision, it's actually a bad television picture because of all the wasted space around me. This bad wide shot is a trademark of the amateur photographer because they haven't yet learned the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds is the main rule for composing images, either still or moving. It requires you to mentally put a tic-tac-toe board on the viewfinder and to place your subject at the intersections of the lines. Does this sound a little confusing? Well, let me break it down for you with two easy examples. The first is that the eyes of your subject should always fall on the top one-third horizontal line, no matter how close or far away the picture. Let's go back to the wide shot. This is how an inexperienced photographer would shoot it. Notice that my eyes are in the center of the image, leaving way too much headroom, which is the distance from the top of my head to the top of the frame. But professionals know that the eye should really fall in the top one-third line, like this. Now let's zoom into the medium shot. Notice that you will have to tilt up to keep the eyes on the top one-third line. The same goes for the close-up and the extreme close-up. For an extreme close-up, you will have to cut off the top of the subject's head, but this is actually okay because the mouth and the chin are way more important than that hairdo. This also leaves space at the bottom of the screen for titles. You should now have an idea why we call these titles lower thirds. The second aspect of the rule of thirds concerns lead room, the space in front of the subject. The rule of thirds says that you should leave more room in front of the direction in which your subject is looking or moving. So if I turn to the side like this, the camera person should put me on the back one-third vertical line, leaving more room in front of me. Similarly, if I'm walking, the camera person should move with me to maintain this lead room. One good way to practice the rule of thirds is look for it when you're watching television. You will notice that the professionals usually follow the rule of thirds, only breaking it for special reasons. Let's apply the rule of thirds in the Nortel Learn It training video, Helicopter Days. Pause right there. Check out the lead room in the shot and notice where the eyes are placed on the grid. Yeah. Notice the lead room and the headroom in the shot. Yeah, the doctor said it should be fine as long as I stay away from helicopters. Okay. Notice where the eyes are and how the window is acting as a talent. Oh. No, it can't be. See? You're becoming more like a professional already. You'll never look at TV the same way again and you now know how to vastly improve your photography by using the rule of thirds. It's a beautiful thing.